Hello, my friends of Catherine Labs. Welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial will be about the determination of lasers and lakes from Sentinel-2 image with QEIS and the semi-automatic classification plugin. Okay, so what we are going to do, we are going to do something like this. We are going to create a... Let me, let me see if this works. Okay, uh, we are going to... Def define the, the lakes and the glaciers using the semi the supervised classification sentinel 2 image so this will be very helpful i mean it's really handy and then we are going to vectorize this data so how are we going to do this okay let's start okay first we open a new project okay once you have opened a new project, uh, then you are going to, uh, we are going to go, you need to have the semi-automatic classification plugin installed. So you are going to plugins, manage and install plugins. And here you're going to put semi, and then it appears here, semi-automatic classification plugin, okay? Okay, once you have this, you go to bank set, and then you go to open a file, and then on the description of this video, you will find some clipped uh, Sentinel-2 image, because actually as a data set is about 700 megabytes, so we, are, we do not want to give you this, to, I mean, to make the tutorial. You can download your own Sentinel-2 uh, image, but in this case, we are going to have a a small part of a Sentinel-2 image to make our tutorial. So what are we going to do? We go to tutorial and here on clip, we have the files that you are going to get on the description of this video. Okay, great, 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 great. Um, wait, wait a minute. Okay, so we are going to open these, these files, okay, and then open. And here we have the whole set of the bands of satellite of Sentinel-2. It's from band 1 to band 12, okay? Uh -huh. But here, actually, the, the band recognition actually do not takes all the bands from Sentinel-2, but only takes band 2, 3, 4, 5. I mean, what does it mean that band 1, band 9, and band 10 are not required? So band 1 is not required. Remove. Band 9 is not required. Remove. And band 10 is as, as well not required. And it will be removed as well. So here we have only yeah. the bands that go from 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8, 12. It's okay. So actually gave it, it assigned automatically the center web link. Okay. And what else? We create a virtual raster set and then we create our band set. Our band set will be of uh, here. You make a new carpet and you say tutorial or like classification. This is where actually the virtual raster will be stored. Okay. Great. You have done your virtual, I mean, you have created your band set. Okay. All of these files actually are it's preferable to have it on a group because it creates a lot of layers that we that we don't want. Okay, and here you can do some interesting things as three, two, one. Okay, this is the um, how is how is it called? This is called um, true color. Okay, what again? What else? So we can create a region of interest. So it will be this one. 
first we have to open the here on next to help I just press the right click of the mouse and the SCP doc if you see I have the SCP doc here as a new let's say as a new item here yeah and sometimes you can have it like this you can have it like no, sometimes I mean by default it appears is I mean split it on some somewhere here but this yeah it appears like this okay yeah and this is not very handy why because uh, you um, you need a lot of, of space here so actually you just go where do you go here just over the layers panel and then it appears this way. okay this is the band set okay that's great created a training input that will be classification will be training training one okay that's great nothing else then we go to the classification doc and then here we are on class that will go that will be glaciers we are on class one that will be glaciers and we apply next okay then what else we are going to define oh no sorry what i'm i have to delete this because this is not a glacier actually this is a glacier okay great so this will be a glacier so actually okay here is macro class one class one okay and then here i get here and then I assign this is a glaze. Okay. Then I have to define the legs. Okay. These are the legs. Legs. Okay, and then I have to define here that this actually is soil because there is soil and there is exposed rock as well. This will be soil. Yeah, and then I have to define another class that will be exposed rock or just rock. Okay, and then I apply here. Okay, that's great. Okay, and the process with uh, semi-automatic plugin is really soft, really easy, it's really easy going. How, how is it this process? Okay, great. First, glaciers, we have to define a specific color, maybe a gray. Lakes, we have to define a blue because it's, it's is better for the recognition on soils let let define this and on rocks will be a dark gray why not okay then we go from this if you if it doesn't apply if this if this doesn't appear on your graphical user interface you have to go here and then you have to on panels i mean you cl right click here and you need to to have the SP SAP working toolbar uh, activate. Okay, so okay, what else? Nothing else. So we go here, and then by default is 200. I have set that to 1,200. So it's actually one. The width of the preliminary view is 1,200. And here we see some very interesting things. Okay, first of all, yep. Here on the layers panel, we can deactivate, activate. The resolution is quite good. Water bodies are well identified. 
exposed rock is as well, well identified as well, but the problem is with the glaciers, okay? If you have seen, okay, let me do that. Glaciers here are well identified, but these parts here are identified as glaciers, and in fact, they are not glaciers, they are not. Okay, I have tried this before, and, and there is another thing here that actually the shadows, the shadows here, appear as water bodies. Yeah, and the, the, these are not true. Okay, so here you can see the glaciers here, but the glaciers here are bad identified, and as well here there are not glaciers. You have to sort that out in the maybe on the documentation on the semi-automatic classification plugin. Or maybe you have to sort that out by going through these options on the classification algorithm. Yeah? You have to play around with the software. Actually, this is just um overview tutorial that uh, this and I mean the, if this is part of your research, if this is part of what you like to do, this is part of your assignment, so it is worth it that you go and do and read the documentation, okay? So, but for the purpose of this, uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, we are going to define this, as it's okay, okay? Because it's actually, and then we are going to define the, we are going to get of the water bodies, okay? So how we are going to get the polygons of the water bodies? Okay, it will be easy, and it will be like this. We go to SAP, we go to classification output, and then we save our result. This output will be glacier. Lake. It will be a uh, okay. So on the layers panel, we'll have that's good. And then on raster, you go to extraction, no conversion, polygonize, and on polygonize, you will polygonize this one. And then you will create um, bop. documents where actually you have this in output, and it will be polygons, and it will be like this. And these are the polygons of the. Okay, actually, I can create some classification to to look it better. This graduated, no categorize. Okay, apply. Cool. And then maybe I soils that is actually number three. I will create some transparency, and then like and rock as well i will create some transparency okay cool and then we have all the water bodies and then we have all the glaciers okay and remember that these are classified as glaciers but actually are not glaciers okay so this was mostly a tutorial for you and i hope that you find this very interesting and then I hope that this tutorial will help you with your work and then will enhance your curiosity about doing stuff with QAS. Okay, I will go dot it. Okay, so uh, what we are, so in case that you wonder what 
we are Hatari Labs. Hatari Labs is a, is a blog um, dedicated to promote the, the use of open source software in water resources, environment, and many other fields. Okay, we have a, a blog with many tutorials. We do mostly tutorials. We do more tutorials on, Q, on mode flow, on QAS, some water surface um, spatial analysis, uh, runoff models, etc. So I hope that this tutorial will be interesting for you. Yep. And I hope that we can keep in touch and then you follow us. If you find what we do interesting, please, um, please share our content. Okay. And you can contact us by our Facebook channel and then you can drop us your question if we can if we can answer this or like if you have some um, general comment or so you can drop it. I mean we do not give basic support because basic support are mostly you can find in blogs or in the documentation but you have a specific question maybe we are interested to develop a tutorial about that. Okay, so once again, my name is Hul Montoya from Hatter Labs. I wish you a very good day and hope to see you in another tutorial. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.